Okay. Looks good, sir. All right, thanks. All right, uh, we can go ahead and get started. Um, my name is Rebecca Thomas, and I am going to be presenting on and really having a conversation with you about uh, learning analytics in higher education. So I currently work as a postdoc at the Oregon State University's eCampus Research Unit. Um, I started in September of last year, so I've been there a little over a year now. And our goal is to do research about online education um, in higher ed, and uh, we also try to promote uh, research um, understanding within the field. So we have multiple projects that we have going on right now, um, but a few that might be interesting to you uh, include our online learning efficacy research database. So that's a database uh, full of studies that compare learning outcomes based off of course modality. So face-to-face -face versus online and blended. And there are different ways that you can search using the database. Uh, you can search by field. So for example, if you're an instructor in a particular field, you can search by that and find uh, studies relevant to you. So if you're interested in that, we have our website here, and that's where all of our resources are located. Uh, we also have a podcast called Research in Action. Uh, we have a book that we recently released called High Impact Practices in Online Education, and we have other uh, studies as well as uh, resources available on our website. Um, we also have uh, some swag available to you up here if you would like some. Uh, there's some cards, and my personal favorite are our podcast research and action sticky notes. So uh, please come up and take those if you're interested. Y'all must be doing really well. <laughs> we try. Um, and I forgot to mention, um, I'm part of a team of four people. So we have our director, Katie Linder, our assistant director, Mary Ellen Delastrito, who is here. Um, I'm a postdoc, and then we also have um, a fourth member of our team that we're currently hiring for. And so your team is just strictly research? Yes, we are all uh, full-time researchers, uh, online education. So we have Mary Ellen here, and she's going to let you know about an opportunity coming up within our unit. Hi, everybody. Um, as Becca said, I'm the assistant director of the unit, and so I thought I'd talk a little bit about this. If you saw me present yesterday, I already talked about this. We are um, embarking on a new project that we just started this summer called Research Seminars, where we bring together um, individuals from researchers, faculty, staff, you name them, instructional designers, analysts, whatever. We bring them together. They apply, um, and they come together to do multi-institution research projects, collaborative research projects. We started this this past year. Becca's going to talk to you about the topic of that seminar today, um, so she'll give you that. I am here to kind of pitch next year's seminar. Um, so the topic for next year's seminar is meta-analysis in online education. Um, so if that's something that you or someone you know is interested, please um, check out our site um, on this topic. We are accepting applicants now until November 30. And we are looking for folks who have really strong research backgrounds, research methodology, and especially people who have an interest and in experience in meta-analysis. So I will be here after uh, Becca's talk if you want to ask questions about uh, next year's seminar. She'll tell you about next year. Mm -hmm. So, um, as Mary Ellen just said, uh, this year we had our first seminar, um, and I'll tell you a little bit about the logistics of that, but it was about learning analytics from a systems perspective. And so, uh, today's session is going to have three uh, major goals. Uh, the first is to introduce learning analytics from a systems perspective, so we're going to define what learning analytics is and how to look at it from a systems perspective. The second is to cover current research areas. Uh, this is going to be a bird's eye view of the different uh, research studies and papers that are currently being published um, on the topic. And then uh, my goal is that we're going to be able to discuss takeaway messages that are applicable to all of you uh, in your current roles. So with that said, I think it would be useful for me to know a little bit more about you. So um, I am going to ask you to introduce yourself. Um, 
if you could tell me your name, uh, where you're from, uh, so place of employment, your current role, and then you don't have to say this if you don't want to, but if you have a certain experience with learning analytics or um, just anything along that that you'd like to share, um, I'd be happy to hear that as well. So I'll go ahead and start here with Mary Ellen. So hi, I'm Mary Ellen Del Trio, Assistant Director of the uh, Research Unit. You've already heard from me. It's good, Susan. Hi, I'm Susan Fine from uh, Oregon State D campus. I'm an instructional designer. Uh, Boyd Beck, Idaho State University, uh, Director of our Online Learning. I'm a user of analytics. I'm not really a generator but, or a collector, but uh, mm -hmm. use it all the time. Yeah, that'll be great to hear you do that. Yeah. I'm Brian Hall. I teach at Portland Community College. I teach writing and literature and international studies. Mm -hmm. I'm Megan Baker. I'm from Portland Community College. I'm their webmaster. My name is Brad Baker. Uh, I'm a community college. I teach their Photoshop videography, but I'm also in the institutional research department as the database reports writer. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Hi, I'm Brad Baker. I'm currently at the Pierce College as well as my faculty. I teach in the English and Mandarin department. I have just realized the years of experience of the online education. Mm -hmm. And I'm Christine Savas. I love analytics. Um, it's kind of the analytics geek. Uh, I actually <laughs> wrote a, a, a little Google script to grab our support tickets and, and turn it around and put into, you know, so we can give them back to our host show them, come over and visit our support system. This is how much we support your students. Yeah, so I'm, I'm attending. Great, thank you. Thank you, Stephen. Yeah. Yeah. Nice to meet all of you. Um, I'm already with some of you because I'm from Oregon State. But uh, I'm really impressed with the diversity we have here. So I know some of you said that you were interested in analytics, that you have experience. If you feel comfortable raising your hand saying, I don't really know what it is and that's why I came, are there any of you guys? No? That would have been me a year ago. So um, I definitely want to acknowledge any expertise and experience in the room when it comes to this topic. Uh, my first experience with this topic was when we started our seminar program this past year. So I really wanted to take a very bird's eye view approach as we start looking at learning analytics. 
So I'm going to start with this big question that can either be complicated or simple, depending on how you look at it. What is student learning? Achieving a goal. Achieving a goal. Okay. Can we elaborate? So achieving a goal. So when it comes to student learning in the context of a university, what is that? What? Meaning-making. Meaning-making of content. Okay. And I think made that mean changing the behavior or changing the, the way of thinking. Okay. Cool. So, achieving a goal, making meaning out of content, and having that affect behavior. Measurable learning outcome. Measurable learning outcome. Okay. That, to me, sounds similar to, or it could be a type of achieving a goal, I think. Yeah. Yeah. So when I'm trying to achieve a goal, going through that process, there's other things that happen that I'm barely, almost not even aware of, that are learning, but they don't have much to do with that goal. Mm -hmm. So for example, if I'm trying to succeed in a class, I may interact with people who are very different from me and begin to Mm -hmm. So you're saying that it's possible to learn something that might not be a particular objective of a class or a learning outcome. Mm -hmm. Yeah, definitely. Yes. Mm -hmm. Connecting the information of prior knowledge. So I know we have quite a few of you that were instructors. So when you think of it from that perspective, is there anything else you'd like to add when it comes to what you would like your students to learn in your courses? Did we cover it? Yes. I can be able to take that and apply it to four hours when you need it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And that would extend past the quarter semester that you're teaching. Is that what you're implying? Yeah, they're, 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 they're like to use that experience to be and I would like them to put into their experiences a lot later uh, to be integrated better. Mm -hmm. The idea is to be that, uh, that unintended learning outcome that can be the result of that course. Mm -hmm. Yeah, thank you. Did I see a hand over here? Did I miss? Definitely. So we have a couple people suggesting that student learning can happen within a course, whether it is um, meeting learning outcomes or something in addition to that. But it also, ideally, it would extend past the course and it would be connected to prior experiences and everything. So what I'm hearing is that student learning is a very broad, complex thing. Does anyone disagree with me on that? <laughs> All right, so now we've, we've gone up there. I think we might need to reel it down a little bit. Mm. I didn't push that, <laughs> and it's not timed. Does that it do that? Happened in yeah. <laughs> that happened in It happened to me earlier. It's a ghost. I didn't touch it. it, it yeah. right. it's All right, well, I was about to go there anyway, so <laughs> uh, it's fake. It's the <laughs> so um, now that we've established student learning and we've gotten our minds going a little broader than what people probably think of when they think of learning analytics, especially if you're familiar, um, I want to think about learner data. So not necessarily the learner analytics that you may or may not be familiar with, but just what kind of data might measure uh, student learning. So how could you collect data that could measure the type of learning that you would want for your students? Showing up, attending. Mm -hmm. Rendering things? Yes. What do you turning mean? Turning in assignments. Turning in assignments, yes. Okay. So attendance, turning in assignments. How could you collect?
collect that data? Okay, so you could do it yourself, or uh, I know that learning management systems can uh, track that for you. Okay, yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so um, a system that would time how long they're on a particular page. Okay. Is that what you're saying? Yeah, how much time they're yeah, the content, mm -hmm. yeah. So showing up, turning in assignments, mm -hmm. actually looking at the content provided. Mm. Yeah, yeah. All right. It, it like haunts me at night that I have no idea if they like do they're in a course and they finish that course and they apply the learning or whatever they were doing in that course content. Mm -hmm. I'm just like, oh, I want to know from this school year in a year or two. Mm -hmm. Like, did this does this person actually do this thing that they were able to do in that control environment? Mm -hmm. <laughs> what yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, but I mean, if we're just talking about learner data, I think that falls into that category. It would be possible to collect data about students after universities, but it would um, probably require a different methodology then. Um, yeah. So what kinds of data are out there for you? Some of you said you use it. Anything we haven't talked about? Well, they all must data these. Yeah. Yeah, student grades and particular scores on sections of a rubric. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Self-reporting, um, observation. Mm -hmm. So self-reporting by an instructor, by a student. By a student oh, yeah. Reflections. Mm -hmm. And, yes. There's a way that I can go into our system and see what students have taken in subsequent terms and how they've done in their courses. Mm -hmm. So if I'm teaching in the sequence, how they're doing, how long do they wait to take the next in the sequence, and then how they're doing in that course? Mm -hmm. Interesting. That's just the data. Mm -hmm. So it's data that does come after you taught that particular course to them. Yeah. Great, that's great to know. Thank you. Yes? Um, sometimes I hear from faculty just some kind of informal stories, I guess, about students, like an engineering professor or something like this, saying that students, when they get to their master's degree, they can write a thesis that they did a lot of help with writing. Mm -hmm. And um, so that's an important data. Mm -hmm. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, thank you. So we started with this idea of student learning, and then we talked about, my computer is fighting me, but then we talked about uh, different kinds of data that we can collect, and now we're gonna get a little more specific to learning analytics. So this is the definition that I've seen most widely cited in the literature. It's from 2012. Um, and it's learning analytics is the measurement, collection, analysis, and reporting of data about learners and their context for purposes of understanding and optimizing learning and <laughs> the environments in which it occurs. Based off of your experience with learning analytics, is there anything that you think this definition doesn't capture? I guess I would be curious if mm -hmm. there's a field of critical learning analytics because I get nervous assumptions we make on the data that we have when it's limited. Mm -hmm. um, so anyway, that's, I feel like the definition is robust, but I feel like sometimes this, the way that I see it is like people making stories for students, and I'm like, oh, I, I think you're maybe taking the data from being available further. Mm -hmm. 
And is that the goal of the analytics or is that the goal of the um, user of the analytics? Do you know what I mean? Yeah. I think that's a good question. It's definitely a conversation that is good to have. Yes. I'm not sure I'm going to answer that question. That's okay. someone access something. Mm -hmm. So can I connect the dot between access versus assessment, you know, achievement? Mm -hmm. That's the thing is, you know, it's like, yeah, okay. Someone's access, accessing a video and they're watching the video, great. Did mm -hmm. they learn anything? I don't know. But I know what they got on an assessment later related to that topic. Mm -hmm. So Am I really looking at the assessment score, or do I also need to know if, did they actually look at the video? Mm -hmm. I probably need both that kind of help with kind of connecting those dots with real time. Mm -hmm. Yeah, like a system that can let you know whether there is a strong relationship between the time spent and the content and the um, score on the so exam. Kind of like to know for sure. <laughs> yes, yes, definitely. Yes. I always sort of have a bit of a struggle for any kind of analytics or um, quantitative data. Because I want to know sort of the bigger story behind it in that qualitative aspect, which I know isn't part of analytics, but it's kind of what people have been alluding to. Like there's, there are leaps that we make from the data that may or may not necessarily be accurate. And it, I, I just feel like it's one limitation perhaps of the purely quantitative information that we can gather. Mm -hmm. Yes, interesting. Yes. Yeah, I guess it's a question of the quality of the data. Um, you might measure how long somebody watched the video, but if you've been watching it for a while, or playing a game, or you're watching it with your kids have to be really hard to measure. Mm -hmm. Yeah. At least if it's just the system giving you a, um, time. There could be other methodology with research where you would look into asking mm -hmm. students and looking into time spent. Thank you all for your responses. You're very thoughtful. Did you have a comment? I was just going to add yeah. the point on the critical <laughs> analytics is, you know, this, this assumes a benign collector of the analytics. Mm -hmm. and I think all of us are quite concerned with the fact that it's not benign. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 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 Great. Thank you. Have any of you seen any of the other terms in the literature that look like learning analytics, but slightly different words like academic and educational. Do you all know the distinction between these? Yeah. So um, sometimes there's a little bit of fuzziness even uh, between different articles in the literature, but the general uh, definition is that learning analytics uh, in the literature is specific to student learning outcomes mm -hmm. and their goals. Um, and so they target things like instructional techniques, uh, curriculum, support resources, things like that. And two of the other similar terms in the literature are also, um, they also utilize analytics, but they're a little bit different. So um, academic analytics refers more to institutional level data. Mm -hmm. So things like operational and financial decision making. And then, um, the term educational analytics refers to a combination of the learning analytics. This is super annoying. I apologize. <laughs> of the learning analytics and uh, the academic analytics. So it's both focused on student learning outcomes and goals, but also at the institutional level. So some examples of this could be um, a program determining what courses to offer or what teaching methods to standardize amongst their instructors. So these are uh, some additional examples of what would fall under the category of learning analytics with the uh, bottom four um, also applying for educational analytics as well. Um, so uh, you can track student progress throughout a course. Um, some we mentioned uh, like things like attendance, but also things like grades, um, assessing student level, 
Um, you can look at aspects of the learning environment. Yeah. Okay. It wants me to. It wants me to go faster. <laughs> um, <laughs> uh, improving learners' experience. Uh, improving collaboration. So these could be some of uh, the goals that learning analytics could seek to help. Um, and then we also have these other examples down here. So before it switches, um, does anyone else have uh, good examples of learning analytics that might drive home what this concept is to someone that is unfamiliar? Yes. Do you think? It's just a PDF of the slides. Yeah. Do you think I, I haven't been in one where it happened, so. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but any other good examples of learning analytics? Do we all have a sense of what it is? It's, it's kind of broad. I know that um, when I first heard of it, all I had was the experience that I had as an undergraduate, kind of logging on and seeing where I fell in terms of, mm. you know, grades and things like that. But um, it can span. Um, I mean, if we go back to the definition, measurement, collection, analysis, and reporting of data about learners in their context. So um, it can potentially uh, answer a lot of questions. So we've talked about learning analytics. And if we're talking about it in the context of a university, there's a lot of stakeholders involved. So I've listed out some uh, categories of stakeholders. We have faculty. Uh, leadership and administrators, advisors and coaches, so this could refer to uh, student success coaches and academic advisors, uh, data analysts and institutional researchers, students, obviously, we're uh, measuring student learning, but surprisingly, a lot of the research um, that has been published so far hasn't um, looked at uh, student perspectives of learning analytics as much as we'd hoped, and instructional designers. Um, I know that we had uh, some people involved in technology in this group, so that could be added. Are there any other important stakeholder groups that um, you would like to mention? I mean, if we're measuring student learning and if the goal of a university is to provide student learning, it could be a lot of people, right? Mm -hmm. So we're talking about um, something big. Mm -hmm. I'm going to skip this one. So when we're talking about learning analytics within the context of a university with all of these different stakeholder groups, it is really helpful to look at learning analytics from what we call a systems perspective. So right here we have a picture of a puzzle. Um, raise your hand if you've done a puzzle. <laughs> this is like my sleep check because most of you have probably uh, put together puzzles. Uh, but you kind of know how if you don't have all the pieces or if you haven't pieced them all together, it creates an incomplete picture and sometimes you don't even know what the puzzle is until you have all of those pieces <laughs> together. And that can um, be true when we're talking about something that can affect so many different groups of stakeholders. If we're not hearing from people in these different groups that are affected by learning analytics or could use learning analytics uh, to benefit either themselves professionally or in the case of student groups could benefit their own learning then we're going to be missing uh, pieces of the puzzle. So uh, our goal for our first uh, cohort of research seminars um, that happened this past July was this topic. It was this idea of learning analytics from a systems perspective. So we had um, two leaders, um, Katie Linder, uh, the uh, chair of my department, and then uh, Rob Nyland from Boise State. And we had eight participants, uh, plus the other members of my team, all come together for a week and uh, design a study relating to this topic. And when we were preparing for this, we thought that it would be a good idea for all of us to at least be on the same page of what learning analytics are mm -hmm. and um, have a good sense of some literature to draw from before we came together for the week and designed a study. So on our first day, or I'm sorry, before uh, everyone came to meet, um, I was tasked with putting together um, a list of articles relating to learning analytics from a systems perspective that everyone in our group was assigned to read before the seminar. 
And then on our first day, we had an activity where everyone uh, kind of categorized the literature in sticky notes all over the walls. And so uh, the categories that I'm going to discuss today were some of the major ones that people identified uh, through that research seminars program. I, from what I can tell, I think that our uh, participants were, were engaged and involved in our, <laughs> our seminar, I hope. Um, at, what? <laughs> <laughs> so uh, these are the five categories that I uh, wanted to go over today. Um, the first one is the history of learning analytics. It's kind of interesting. Um, does anyone know what year learning analytics became its own field? Okay. So it was in uh, 2011 was when it was first titled learning analytics and there was a first conference dedicated to learning analytics as a field. <sighs> right? <laughs> um, and so they had the first uh, Learning Analytics and Knowledge Conference, it's called LIK, uh, in 2011, and then the first journal devoted to Learning Analytics in 2014. Um, of course, they were doing analytics um, well before that, um, especially in uh, sciences like biology, and then education started using um, educational data mining around the 1990s. But it wasn't until uh, these years that learning analytics mm -hmm. became a thing. And both of these are after I graduated from high school. So that's kind of my target of like, this is a new field. Mm -hmm. um, the thing about that is, is as I keep getting older, that target's going to stay the same, but the audiences are going to change. And so <laughs> they're going to be like, it's not that new. But I consider this to be a relatively new field. Um, part of the reason that learning analytics has taken off so much and become such a, a hot topic in education uh, has to do with uh, technology growth um, in the past uh, few years, and that's increased the scope of available data that we have uh, or that we could have to use. Um, and there's also been um, an emphasis on uh, data-driven decision-making. Decision <laughs> and uh, urgency to do that. So uh, that includes things like academic performance, retention, and grades, um, which are uh, all things that came up in our discussion before. I'm gonna fight with the computer for you. Thank you. <laughs> um, so, and within the literature up to this point, uh, the discussions surrounding learning analytics have most often happened uh, within distance education, uh, like uh, context here in technology enhanced learning, um, and also, uh, it's mainly talked about how it's happened within learning management systems. Mm -hmm. However, that is growing and learning analytics is becoming more of a topic for higher education in general. Now we're ready. Thank you. Yay. So the second big bucket that there's a lot of discussion about, mm -hmm. but we haven't necessarily arrived at that final place is privacy. So why do you think privacy is a big uh, area in the field when it comes to learning analytics in higher education? Sherpa, okay. Yeah, so this idea of do students know what is being collected? Do they know what it's being used for? Should they know? Yeah. Why else for privacy? What about security of data? So data security is a, a big topic. Um, student control over data, so um, we've talked about that. And then uh, the transparency, so the communication um, when it comes to privacy. Ready? Yes. So the next bucket is uh, ethics. So why would ethics be a big topic when it comes to the discussions around learning analytics? And what do we mean by something not so good? What that? What could that look like? Mm 
-hmm. Yeah. And what if you're not trying to target a specific group, but something about the, the method that you're collecting data may lead to bias, too? That's a, that's a conversation. Mm -hmm. Any other ethical thoughts? Yes. Mm -hmm. Definitely. And uh, kind of going back to that comment earlier, are we reading too much into the data that we have? And does that have ethical implications yeah. when it comes to yeah. the treatment of students? I think monetizing is something too. Collecting data for the, for the improvement of education and then somehow somebody turning and monetizing mm -hmm. that somehow mm -hmm. is one of the concerns that not only students have, but of course we all have about mm -hmm. other thoughts when it comes to ethics I kind of said this earlier but just to make it more clear whether or not these analytics are reinforcing biases that we have that's a big one and we actually within our seminars group we had a, a member that wanted to start a reading group uh, related to this so I have several books on my desk um, that are related to this topic and it's a, it's a big conversation learning analytics and also just when talking about uh, data in general uh, and how it's being collected and what we're using it for. And now it's not advancing, you notice that, when you need it to. Right. <laughs> um, and then the literature is also looking at benefits of learning analytics. So what are, or what do you think are benefits or could be benefits? And looking at how it's affecting uh, student learning, yeah. too. So are our students learning in this new program that we just? Right. Are they going to come out of this program with the skills that they need to actually do the job that they need to do? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Any other potential benefits? Yes. So sometimes when a student doesn't perform well in an online class, I'll look at that uh, in the system sometimes give me, because students can not perform well for a variety of reasons, mm -hmm. and then there's a student who clearly has not been looking at all the things, mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. that helps me, like, okay, well, at least I know that about them. Yes. It helps mm -hmm. me brainstorm on how to proceed with that student. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yes. So it helps with trying to make students successful. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and knowing as an instructor how to move forward with those students. Yes, thank you. Yes. I can think of a, a cost benefit in that if we have learning analytics on students, they're not going to take classes that are not suited for them, or we could cut things that obviously don't work that we're funneling money into. Mm -hmm. Yeah, definitely. Analytics can help with that. Yes. Mm -hmm. So looking specifically at a subset of learners yeah. and their behavior and how it relates, yes.
sometimes um, looking at data can expose relationships or trends that you might not have even considered or thought of, and then all of a sudden there there's something that, well, that's an interesting pattern. Mm -hmm. So sometimes that can reveal itself. Mm -hmm. These are all some great benefits, um, and I agree there's a lot. I mean, I think it comes down to if learning analytics work the way we hope they work or close to that, then and if they're actually effective in improving student learning, then there are so many benefits to learning analytics. Um, this is an area that uh, more research is needed in. There was a review published in 2018 that it didn't show a lot of evidence for learning analytics as they are improving student learning. That doesn't mean that they didn't. It just means that we need more research in this area and it is a relatively new field. Um, but that is something that um, we are looking into in our research study that we uh, proposed for our seminars. Yes? Might that also imply that the data analytics were being done but it's not actually being used? Super good. Mm -hmm. It could. So you're saying that it's available there but might not be being yeah, used by so the user. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. 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 Definitely. That's a great point and something to look into to see if that could be one. Yeah. What about challenges? So this is an area where they're discussing challenges with learning analytics. Yes. I just see a problem with um, since learning is so specific to the person, reproducibility of studies. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. So are different studies finding the same results? Is that what you're saying? Yeah. 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 We could look into that. Sheer quantity of it. So in the past, our primary indicator was a test score or a quiz score or yeah. something like that. Now it's, I can look at it from six slides. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And could that be overwhelming for? Of course. <laughs> yeah. Yes. And would it like be no post um, numbers? They, they tell us eight numbers, but not why we talk about numbers. Mm -hmm. And we're talking about that it's kind of this difference that seems to be quantitative and qualitative in this yeah. research. Mm -hmm. So we look at it and go, oh, that's a number. We make some assumptions which can correlate in our mind when it really may not be the how mm -hmm. or why it's working that way. Mm -hmm. so Yeah, and so it could possibly be step one, but you're saying that you might need step two, additional research yeah, to, yeah. Challenge may not make giant leaps. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. Those quantitative numbers and start to correlate and that's how they end up. Right, yeah, and this is a group that's all interested in learning analytics, so you uh, seem pretty well versed in data and that kind of thing, but all instructors may not have uh, that understanding of the limitations of analytics when they're using it too. So yes, yes. Kind of an add-on to that. Yes. Um, if you have small sample sizes, being able to make people understand that, yeah, this might be saying one thing, but once you get a larger sample size, it may be something that's completely different. Mm -hmm. I've had multiple reports where literally one student can completely flip mm -hmm. out if you have this. Mm -hmm. Oh, interesting, yeah being aware of that. Yes? Is the analytics, um, just by their very nature, leave out certain groups of people? You know, they, they can't capture an entire spectrum. Mm -hmm. 
mm -hmm. at least. And so there's always somebody who's going to be not represented necessarily, mm -hmm. which may or may not be harmful or helpful, depending. Yeah. What about challenges? A lot of the literature is about challenges of like implementing learning analytics within an organization too. What challenges might you anticipate there? Yeah. Even financial ones for that one. Mm -hmm. There might be some new software that doesn't look at your job, but it's not in your budget to be able to use it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, Yeah. 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 Uh, yes. I don't mean to have a side bias on this room. <laughs> I think too, like, um, access to certain technologies to support whatever they're implementing. That's a challenge sometimes. Mm -hmm. So, um, would you, what would be an example of that? And you don't think the analytics would show that situation? Or were you saying something different? No, I just brought that Oh. Yeah, no, it was a great comment. Thank you. <laughs> uh, yes. So uh, it's really hard to change, especially if it involves like implicit bias. And you're oftentimes asking for institutions to change, and there's little motivation for them to change. Any other challenges? Yes. Just to say that there's, there's challenges that's going to be unique to the institution. Mm -hmm. and, uh, you know, just looking at what Google, what Google Analytics does for one particular business mm -hmm. and the metrics that might be useful. And you know, we're all in education together, but how much data is, is available to each one of us is mm -hmm. how the data arrives. Thank you all for the comments. There were basically this challenges section is big in the literature and there are a lot of different uh, categories of it, but you hit on a lot of them um, with some really good examples. Um, there are a lot of challenges when it comes to implementation within a system. There are papers about how to use a systems perspective where you have to you know, educate and inform um, all of the stakeholders of learning analytics uh, with in that organization and then there are challenges to using and applying and actually um, understanding the learning analytics themselves. And then of course there are challenges with the other categories we have up here too. So like with privacy and ethics and all of those uh, kind of sticky situations that I think we're still working through. So it's definitely a big conversation uh, happening in the field. Any going forward? Yeah, two, two. So, We've discussed uh, some of these buckets, um, what uh, is happening in the literature. I think that um, within all these categories, it's still an ongoing conversation. But can you all think of any takeaway messages that uh, could be personally relevant to you or any of the stakeholders when it comes to learning analytics? What could you take away from um, thinking about this stuff um, moving forward? yeah so using these effectively might take certain specialists that are 
trained in this and trained with that communication and everything. Yeah. Yeah. So what do we think that faculty need to be thinking about as they approach learning analytics, use those? Yes? I don't want to talk about, I mean, at our school, there's this inherent tension between the faculty and the leadership and administrators, because leadership and administrators have no contact with students except through data. Mm -hmm. And we have experience with students, and then we have data. Mm -hmm. and I, my assumption is that we have a more complete picture and that the administrators are only acting through data. Mm -hmm. That causes all sorts of tension mm -hmm. that I don't know how to resolve. Mm -hmm. But mm -hmm. oftentimes the administrators think they have the complete picture from the data. Mm -hmm. So right. it's really important. <laughs> yeah. So we have these two stakeholder groups coming from different, you know, puzzle pieces or places uh, within the system with different uh, experiences and assumptions with the data. And, and you also have a power dynamic there too when you have leadership and faculty. Yes, that's really interesting, thank you. Yeah, so maybe a stakeholder group could benefit from a tool that some people are using, but the communication or the awareness of that data might not be there. Interesting. Any other kind of takeaway messages from when you think about, you know, learning analytics as it gets used or how it could be used in the future? What do you think? We should be thinking about. That is formative assessment, not just summative. Okay. Take that in and go, oh, there's an improvement. Yeah. Yep. And there's a narrative and not just an answer. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, I think it can also be useful to pair the data with possibly other information that you have or you could have. Uh, depending on your role um, about that student. So for example, as an instructor, you might get some data and that can be a starting point, but if you're able to reach out to them and have a conversation, that could um, fill in that narrative more than the data alone. Yeah. Well, thank you all. You were a really uh, thoughtful group. I appreciated all of your comments. Um, about learning analytics from an assistance perspective. Um, just so you kind of know what our uh, unit is doing going forward with the seminars program, uh, we've designed a multi-site qualitative interview study where we will be interviewing the stakeholder groups that were um, on the slide here about uh, the different categories that we talked about today. So I'm looking forward to getting uh, more data from uh, these groups about uh, learning analytics within higher education. So 
uh, we can possibly uh, keep these conversations rolling and move forward. Uh, so thank you all for coming. Uh, this is my uh, contact information um, and also our information for Oregon State uh, eCampus. Thanks. took it out of full screen mode it was still advancing yeah. no thank you for being here and doing that yeah that was hard work yeah mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. he was yeah it was, um he's the leader he's the co-leader with katie for that cohort oh, no. yeah so we got to work with him a lot and he he spent the week with us, oh. um, and Ben Croft was also part of that cohort. Oh, Ben's so lovely. Yes. He really helps us understand what you started doing. Yes, yes. Okay. He's a part of our collaborative research group. Okay. Um, the, it's called Cheddar, and we meet about quarterly. He's been on some of those calls with us. Yeah. Cool. yeah. I was interested in the yeah. podcast, and I didn't say it. Uh -huh. Do you, do you guys just oh, yeah, only do it agree. within yeah. your university yeah, so campus, talking, or do you? Have no, guests? we have guests from all over the world on there. That's so cool. Yeah, yeah, and and that yeah, podcast is not specific to online. It's higher ed in general. It's broad. Okay, it's, it's pretty broad. broad. Um, and Katie, the director, does most of those interviews. I have a, a series on quantitative methodologies and statistics. So I have an episode about every month and a half to two months. Oh, okay. So there's there's a few of those, and we're going to be bringing on a couple more guest hosts. Oh, um, fun. Yeah, so, so there's 100, and I'm working on episode 180 right now. I'm That's editing exciting. episode 180, so there's plenty there for you to dig around yeah. in if you're interested. There's That's some really exciting. great episodes. So. Oh, I'm sure. Yeah. yeah. yeah I'm, I'm finding a lot of great resources on podcasts out there. I've been, yeah. for my particular field, I've been listening to Instruction by Design mm -hmm. through mm -hmm. ASU. And they, yep, yep, yeah. yep. There's some good podcasts out yeah. there. So. Thank you. Yeah, good to meet you. So did Victor come and see if he could figure it out? Yeah, I mean, he's like, I don't know. Like, <laughs> it's over now. So. But what a pain in the neck, right? I'm glad I was here to fight with it for you. Yeah. I thought it was, for a while there, it kind of stopped. I was like, okay, I'm not going to get up. And then I look at Susan, I'm like, should I go deal with that? She's like, yes. <laughs> it was terrible. <laughs> but yeah, what a nice group you have. Right. Oh, that was a good fantastic group. Yeah. I skipped a couple. I mean, I did end a little early, but there were a couple things that I was like, I, I want to leave more time for the takeaway. Yeah. It was really, really good. I have really really somebody for the metadata analysis. You do? Yes, my advisor, yeah. my PhD advisor. Oh, my God. He was an expert. That was what he did. All of his did research meta was meta, oh meta analysis. Please All send of them. the link. For I will. Me. Okay. So you remind me, me uh, though. No, yeah, when we get back to the office, I will send... Yeah, because I might well, just forget. Give me, well, no, it's probably coming from you. It might be noticed more. I'll give you the the yeah. the invitation okay. email, and yeah. you can send it to him. And he might know two or three other people because that's yeah. his specialty is wonderful. meta analysis. What's his name? Sola Adesope. Okay, wonderful. Yeah. Yay. Yeah. Oh, Hooray. Thank you. So and that's how we're going to get people to to. Um, and he probably will know other submit people. for this because it's yeah. going to be network analysis. It's okay. going to be networking, kind of like this, because I know this is a much more narrow topic. Mm -hmm. So that's why I'm trying to right. get it to strategic people yeah, yeah, yeah. who will send it to well, other people. So if that's Sola fabulous. doesn't want to participate for whatever reason, he's on tenure track, so who knows? Yeah, he's yeah. always crazy doing his research yeah. to try and, but. If he doesn't, um, he probably knows people. Yeah, good. Because that's Yay. his thing. Well, and in this invitation message,